Hello and welcome to Big Up Games unboxing video of the new Magic the Gathering Aether Revolt Tezzeret Master of Metal Planeswalker deck. My name is Simon and I'll be doing the unboxing today. So what I'm going to do is open this up and show you what you get inside. This isn't an in-depth guide into how the deck plays or strategies or anything like that. I'm just going to show you sort of the uniqueness of this when I can open it. <laughs> the uniqueness of this Planeswalker deck. Uh, what cool stuff you get inside. So let's just take this little bit off. So that's where your Planeswalker is. And then everything else is kept inside this cool purple box. Um, I'll come back to the Planeswalker himself in a bit and talk you through Tezzera. So let's open this up so you get your pre-constructed 60 card deck there. Um, so you've got your pre-constructed 60 card deck in there. You've got your two Ether Revolt boosters. And then here we have a nice little guide. So we open this up and have a look. So big picture of Tezzera in the middle. <laughs> and then we have a little bit about Tezzera, uh, about learning to play magic how to play this deck, how to boost the deck after you've played it a bit, and a deck list here. So this is useful if you've uh, added or changed any cards to the deck or you just want to be able to recreate it. That's really cool. You've got a list there. And then on the back, just a little bit of story about Tezzeret himself. He's got a bit of a backstory in Magic. He's been in other sets and done a fair few things. So interesting character. And then we have here picture for the other Planeswalker deck from the set, the Ajani Valiant Protector, so which I will be unboxing, so feel free to go check that out. And then just adverts for some of the other magic products you can take a look at. So we have here, so we have the Planeswalker, the 60 card deck, and the two boosters. So before I get into the actual deck itself, I'll show you Tezzeret. So if you've bought one of these, or going to buy one of these, just be careful getting them out of here. You don't want to bend or catch any corners of them. So what I do is just push the metal, uh, sorry, metal, <laughs> hardcore. Just push the plastic slightly, uh, just so it releases the card nice and gently. You don't want to damage it, do you? So here we have the Tezzeret Master of Metal Planeswalker card, which I've got to admit, purple's one of my favorite colors, but it looks really cool in the filing. So he's a six mana, four blue and a black. He comes in with five loyalty counters and he has three abilities. So his first one is a plus one loyalty counter ability. You reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact card. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this lets you sort of, um, it's effectively a, a draw but a very precise draw because you're only allowed to pull an artifact card and this deck is full of them so you'll see that. His minus three loyalty counter ability targets an opponent, sorry, targets an opponent and they lose life equal to the number of artifacts you control. Which, um, which in this deck is a total of eight. So there's eight artifacts in the deck, sorry. Um, so, you know, that's a significant life chunk when people only start on 20. And a minus eight loyalty is gain control of all artifacts and creatures target opponent controls. It's a very nasty ability, especially as it's, it only takes four turns. Three turns of plusing one, minus eight, yes, you'll lose Tezzeret. But you take it to take control of everything they have. How cool is that? So Tezra is a pretty neat card. So let's take a look at the actual deck itself. Let's see if I can break into the plastic prism with some ease, hopefully. No, he can't because the tab doesn't want to come with me. There we go. There we go. So you also get in here the quick reference. So if you're new to magic. What the quick reference is, is just a little fold out you can put next to you whilst you're playing that explains some of the very basic concepts and then goes through the setup and the different, the well, the anatomy of the term. So you can keep that out next to you whilst you're playing and just reference it when you need to just remind yourself of how the game plays. Um, ideally you should be learning with someone because it's way more fun to learn magic together. If you're not, I'd suggest um, give it a try with the Magic Jewels program. So you can get that online on PC and Xbox and stuff. Uh, that's a really good way of learning by yourself how to play if you haven't got anyone to play with at the time. So here's the actual 60 card deck. So it's in a slightly randomized order. What I'm going to do is pull out the cards that are unique to this deck. So each Planeswalker deck that's come out so far has had cards that are exclusive to the deck. And what they do is they um, focus around the Planeswalker himself. So I think I've just found them all. No, treasure just touches in the... Oh, no, that's a normal one. So there we go. 
So I'm going to show you these ones first, I'm going to highlight these cards and I'll take a very quick look through the rest of the deck afterwards. The deck lists are all available on the Magic the Gathering website, so this is just highlighting some of the coolest bits. So you get Submerged Boneyard, which I think is a reprint from Oath Gatewatch, I think, but it's a reprint from a slight, uh, the previous set. What it does is it enters tapped and then its ability is to tap, add a blue or black to your mana pool. So this is a non-basic land that gives you access to the two colours this deck focuses on, blue and black. So it's just a nice way to have access to a little bit of additional, uh, sorry, the correct colour you need for the time, and you get four of those. We then have the Pendulum of Patterns. So this is a two mana artefact. When it enters the battlefield you gain three life, so a little bit of life gain, always nice, helps uh, stave off being killed. And you can pay five mana and tap it, and sacrifice it to draw a card. So you're primarily going to be playing this down to count as an artifact, probably for some of the mechanics in here that care about how many artifacts you have. You gain three life when you play it, nice little bonus, and you can in a pinch pay the five to draw a card. Now this is an expensive ability to activate, so I wouldn't recommend trying to aim for it doing it very often, but it is nice to know you've got that choice, especially late in the game, and you get four of those. Tezzeret's Simulcrum. So this is a 3 mana artifact creature golem subtype. It's a 2 power 3 toughness and it has tap. Target opponent loses 1 life. If you control Tezzeret though, as a planeswalker, that player loses 3 life instead. So this is a card that goes well. It has synergy with the actual Tezzeret himself. So you can already start to see the, the idea of this deck focusing around Tezzeret. And you get 3 of those. And then we have Tezzeret's Betrayal. This is a 5 mana, 3 blue and a black. It's a sorcery. And destroy target creature. You may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Tezzeret Master of Metal. Reveal it and put it in your hand. If you search your library this way though, shuffle it. Um, so yeah, so this card, you get two of them. And this card is what allows you to get Tezzeret into play, which, seeing as the deck focuses so much around him, it's very useful to have that ability to get him. Um, it also gets him from the graveyard, so if he has been killed in a previous turn or you've managed to use up all his loyalties, you get to get him back, very nice bonus. And it also destroys the target creature, which is a very black ability. So yeah, that's, it's you know the flavour of the card works, the colour combination works, because blue is good at searching, black is good with kill spells. Um, so yeah, it's just it's a quite a nice card, very flavourful, and it works really well for the deck. It's a shame you only get two of them. But on the other side, if you've had to use those twice already to search out Tezzeret or game back, the game's probably gone on a bit long as it is. So we'll take a very quick look at the deck. Unfortunately, it's um, they come a little bit mishmash. Um, so let me just try and split it up. I'm going to put all the artifacts to the front. Um, and that's all the lands in there, so that's all the islands and swamps. Now the deck's a fairly even blue-black split, which is nice. Um, it's not too one-sided. There's, As you can see, there's a lot of artifacts in there. Did I say eight at the start of video? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's twelve there. So my apologies for saying eight. Uh, plus we've got the extra um, six, seven from here, seven from here. So there's actually 19. I don't know where I got the 8 from. There might have been 8 um, non-creature artifacts, my apology. Um, so yeah, if you were to manage to get every single one of these out into play, Tezzeret's, um, uh, Tezzeret's ability minus 3 would be incredibly devastating. But generally speaking, um, most of these artifacts, um, <laughs> some of them are a bit cheap. Uh, some of them are a little bit more expensive than others, but generally you're mostly playing them just for the ability to have artifacts out, and the deck just relies on you having artifacts in play to access abilities such as, as long as you control an artifact, he gets plus one and has death touch. Uh, so they're gaining boosts for having them. Bastion Inventor is probably a very powerful card for the deck because he's a 5-6 mana in total, 4-4 four, four creature with hexproof, so your opponent can't hit him with kill spells or abilities, which is quite expensive though, 6 mana, but he has Improvise. So for each artifact you tap whilst casting him, it reduces the cost by 1. Really useful, so if you have 3 or 4 of these out, you're only paying a couple of mana to put them into play. And it's things like that 
um, you just have cards that rely on having enchantments out that give you bonuses for doing that. So that is the focus of the deck, is getting these uh, artifacts out into play. Some of them have abilities, um, some of them are quite devastating, Barricade Breaker for example. He has to attack every turn if able, and he's a 7 mana 7-5, seven, but with Improviser you can make him cheaper. And you attack with the 7 5 every turn, your opponent's going to be crying very soon. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you just get all these cool artifact creatures out and just beat your opponent down. So it seems a little simple on the surface, just play the artifacts. But there is the balancing of activating them for uh, uh, improvised costs and also different abilities. So there's a little bit of a balancing action. You've got to make sure you are set up ready to play things in the right order and stuff like that. So it's not quite as straightforward as it looks. But being an introduction Planeswalker deck, it's still, there's nothing overly complex about it, don't worry. So there's no you know mega, in, uh, mega intricate five card combination or anything like that going on. It's still just about, you know, if you do just play every artifact you get to make the big stompy creatures a bit cheaper, you know, you're doing the right thing. And then you want to get Tezra himself out to help you get those artifacts and then either pop his ultimate ability or get enough half artifacts into play to activate his minus three. So yeah, very artifact focused tech as you can as I can keep iterating. Can't say enough because there are so many in there. <laughs> but it also means it's quite easy to expand the deck from what it is. Because artifacts are colourless, it's quite easy to switch them with other colourless cards, or because there is black and blue in the deck, you can switch it with black and blue cards. So speaking of that, you get two booster packs in here. So let's take a look, open them up. So, wow, right off the top of the gate. Um, I'm not going to go through every card in the booster. I'm just going to highlight a couple. Negate would fit perfectly in the deck. It's a two-mana instant that allows you to counter a target non-creature spell. That fits perfectly into this deck. It's good at slowing your opponent down, stopping them from playing like big bomb spells or something like that. Um, so, um, so, yeah, let's have a look through to see... Implement Aegis Ultimate, another artifact creature, two mana, it's a 0-3. Unfortunately though, and this is the kind of thing you have to watch out for, its ability is white. It's a white activation, so unfortunately you won't be able to use that in this deck as it stands. This would be perfect, efficient construction, four mana, enchantment, so it sits out in play. And whenever you cast an artifact, you get a 1-1 one, one Thopter token. Perfect. Um, let's just take a look. Oh, we've got Shram, Senior Edificer, which unfortunately is a white card and doesn't fit in the Planeswalker deck as it is. However, he's a very nice card for things like Commander. Very cool format. You should look it up if you don't know what that means. So, in the next boost, let's take a look. So, um, another one that was quite cool Augmenting Automaton. So, it's a 1 mana 1 1 artifact creature, but it has for 1 and a black it gets plus one plus one till the end of turn and that is it doesn't say once per turn so you can keep activating that for every two mana as long as one of which is a black one you can pump that and make it bigger and stronger so yeah loads of artifacts in this stuff ornithopters are always cool because it's zero cost lifecrafters bestiary now unfortunately it's got a green activation even though it's a a uh, <laughs> artifact um so it's a three mana and at the beginning of your upkeep you can scry one I'll come back to that. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay a green to draw a card. So unfortunately, you lose out on the second ability if you were to put it in this deck, because you haven't got green. But at the beginning, you creep scry one. Scry one means uh, f for every number of scry, so scry one would be one card. Look at the top, before you draw, you can look at the top card of the deck and choose to either put it on the top or the bottom. Um, I said before you draw, sorry, ignore that. <laughs> Don't know why I said it like that. Uh, Oh yeah, because uh, untap upkeep draw. So yeah, you do it in your upkeep. Sorry, so you would. So before you draw, you look at the top card and you choose to put it on the top or the bottom. So it allows you to sort of control what you're drawing. Say you've already got eight lands in play. You don't want any more this turn. You scry one, look at the top card of the deck and go, oh, it's a land. Put it to the bottom. You know, it helps you fix your draw that way. So scry is really cool. So you could sort of get a benefit out of that with this deck, but... Sadly, <laughs> you do miss out on its key ability there. So that's just an example out of the boosters. There are a load of artifact cards in there which go in. We saw that blue card which would go in really well. 
there's always ways to modify and edit these sorts of decks because they're quite they're quite simply made, simply built, so it's easy to change things. And in fact, Universal Solvent is probably the first card I would change. It's only a one drop, so it's nice to tick up your artifact count. But its actual ability is pay seven, tap, and sacrifice it to destroy a permanent. Now that's useful because permanent means you can also destroy another enchantment, uh, another artifact, a planeswalker. You know, you can destroy a lot of different things, but it's a very expensive ability to activate. But yeah, overall, I, I prefer this deck over the Ajani deck because it is artifacts. I love the theme of artifacts. I think it's really cool. And also, as I keep <laughs> banging on about, um, it's very easy to modify this deck with more artifacts and tinker and tinker into your own style, which you know I feel that fits in nicely with Ether Revolt and Kaladesh's theme of inventing and tinkering. So, for its worth. I much prefer this deck. I also prefer Tezra. I think he's a really cool villain. In terms of bad guy uh, planeswalkers, Tezra is definitely my favourite. Ajani is one of my favourite, um, one of my favourite hero ones, but Tezra is my favourite villain one. So there we go. That is everything you get in the Tezra planeswalker deck. So all the cards you've seen here today can be bought and sold as individual cards on our website, bigorbitcards.co.uk. So check that out. Uh, remember to like and, like and subscribe. Also, have a look at my other videos. I'll be unboxing the rest of the stuff from A3 Revolt, including the Planeswalker deck. So, if you're interested, take a look at those. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.